Today, we get to have some fun. Our friend Teresa Romero is going to showcase the design of disconnection. Teresa is an internationally published hair and makeup artist. She is the former Redken, she's a former Redken performing artist, Sassoon Academy director, edu educator and director of, oh my gosh, guys, really tongue tied this morning. Sorry about that. Director of Education at Avenue 5 Institute for Beauty and Makeup. Teresa's cut and her color and styling work can be seen internationally in a variety of different magazines, all over social media, the runways, film and hair competitions, tons of Naha content. And she's currently working as the Artistic and Education Director for Jose Luis Salons in Austin, Texas, and still does hair all the time. So. Teresa is a busy, busy woman. So please in the chats, welcome our good friend and Sandy ambassador, yeah. Teresa Romero. Hi, Teresa. Hi, good morning. Hey, I wanna kick it off because we talked about your incredible photo work. Let's talk about some of this incredible photo work that you do. What, uh, what is some of your favorite work to do? Um, everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I think uh, my, my favorite thing to do is when I'm working with a client in salon work is finding that right recipe of cut and color, that right marriage to really make it work for that client to where they can feel the best and look the best that they can. And for contest work, that's definitely a little bit more of the creative side or editorial. It, you know, it's bringing visions to, uh, to life, be it my own vision or a team member vision. Um, that's what we do. And these are great examples of all of the above the, the uh, second, third and fourth, photo on the top line and it's all in salon work and oh, wow. the rest is a competition and a couple of them are actually uh, Naha finalists this year for the team division for the salon. So, you know, I just love it all. Uh, I wouldn't have been here and stayed in the industry like I have if I just didn't love everything about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're excited to learn from you, especially seeing all this beautiful photo work. So I'm going to jump off the screen and let you get to it. And as always, I'll pop back in and ask some questions as we go. Okay. Thank you, Andrew. I hey, welcome everybody. So we're going to get right into um, what, you know, what is this connection? I have a cut prepared for us, guys. And I want to, you know, when we think about this connection, sometimes we feel like, you know, what does that mean exactly? Uh, well, let me kind of sum it up for you. This connection can be a visual surprise, something that you actually see, like for instance, with this particular mannequin, this entire section is disconnected and you can actually see it, it's part of the design. Or disconnection can also be something that could solve a problem, be it maybe you're dealing with a larger bone structure and the occipital bone kind of protrudes. So how do we soften that? or how do we build weight into something? So disconnection is simply put, it's an area of the hair that's slightly different or disconnected from the rest of the hair that either visually contributes something or solves a problem and it can go either way. So today let's take a look. I wanna jump right into a cut for you guys. This is one of my favorite, favorite cuts to do. It's fast. It kind of looks like today's shag. You're going to see her come back. We're going to do a little bit of razor work on her fringe. But this is where we're heading on this particular cut first. So let's take a look at how she was created. Now, this mannequin does have a little bit longer hair, guys. So I will adjust the screen so that you can see everything. And as we go through these sections, I'll make sure I'll turn her so that you can see all the different angles that we're using. But let's take a look at the sectioning. First thing I'd like you to see is on the top section. Do you see how that's coming back to a point? So we're working right around that parietal ridge, all the way around that parietal ridge. And notice that this one's ending kind of in a point in the center back. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six sections that fall vertically. And this is based upon, again, bone structure, center part of the head, this hair falls to the right, this hair falls to the left. Working behind the mastoid, or behind the ear, the mastoid process area, this hair will fall right behind the ear. And of course, the remaining hair will be the sides. So let's get going. Now, personally, I like to use all types of shears, but I am using my Sanvia swivel shear for this. Uh, it just fits really well. I have a little bit smaller hands, and it gives me the ability 
to move the shear in and out of my hand to whatever position I need to. So I personally tend to lean to that a lot, but we definitely will be using different types of shears today so you can see how they work and why would we choose one shear over another? So we're not gonna waste any time. We're going to go right in and we're just going to take this off. This entire section, all the way from that point, is combed forward. Do not need any of that hair. It's just fun to cut a lot of hair sometimes, isn't it? Let me kind of move that around a little bit so you guys can see even better. Now we're going to go all the way to the back. Let's look from that profile. Here's that point in the center back. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this quite short, guys. Let's bring this off. Making sure we can see that. Now, how you do the top is totally up to you. I'm just choosing this. I mean, working with a lot of over direction. I want to bring all the hair forward. I want to bring all the hair backwards. And in just a moment, I'll bring all of the hair to each side. This is a little bit more aggressive approach than the cut that I just showed you. But she has a larger and wider bone structure, this particular mannequin. And that is why I'm finishing on a point rather than a square back here. And we'll examine that a little bit further in just a moment. Just thought it'd be fun to cut a lot of hair off. Let's take the rest. It's fun to do this in the salon as well. I have a lot of, a lot of coworkers who, and friends with that, within the industry, we talk about, you know, it's a lot of fun to cut a lot of hair off sometimes. Not that you have to do it all the time, but when you do get that opportunity, why not? Today's looks are, there's a lot of precision, there's texture, it's lived in texture. And I'm just using the precision of the bone structure. I'm letting the bone structure guide me on where I want to remove the hair. Almost done, guys. A little bit more. And you can see I'm just following the shape of the mannequin's top of her head. I want to make sure everybody can see that. So wherever you guys are at, I hope you're having a beautiful day and a beautiful weekend. I hope amazing things are happening in your life. We do live in an amazing time. To have all this education online like this is so awesome. And I'm very excited to be here with you guys. So we've finished cutting the top for now. We will come back and revisit that later. But I want to go ahead and bring us to the next step. The next step is to simply mimic that triangular section that I've already created. And drop that section down. There we go. Oops, let's go the other way, guys. There we go. Because we're about to start the main part of the disconnection. Clip whatever hair you don't need just out of your way. Just, just get rid of it. Now, for the purpose of demonstration today, guys, I'm going to show you half of this, and then I will finish the rest of this cut and post it on my social media later. And I've also done a video of this particular cut that will be out later on social media as well so that you can see, if you want to go back and rewind and see how it's done, you'll be able to see how this particular one behind me was done. Okay, so now let's drop this little section down. Okay, I have our center back, our area right behind the ear, and then our side section. I'm going to go ahead and moisten this just a little bit. It's okay to work on hair that's partially dry or semi-damp. This is a little too dry. I don't want to have to have trouble combing the hair because I'm going to work in three large sections. So where does the disconnection happen here? So one of the amazing things about disconnection is if you, if you blend at one certain point, it looks like it blends through the cut, 
but that doesn't mean the neighbor sections or the neighbor hair has to blend as well. So each of these three sections are going to blend with the hair that I've already cut on top, but this section will not tell this section what to do. And this section will not tell this section what to do. They will work independently from each other, but visually it looks like it all blends. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And let me get this out of the way because I want to make sure you can see this really clearly. And let's go ahead, let's help this out. Let's get a little bit of a lighter comb here. Now, Sam Bia combs do come in white and black. It does help to be able to see the white combs are really nice to see on darker hair, as you can see. And of course, the black comb kind of blends in a little bit more. But in the salon, use whichever you feel is best. But it does help to have a con contrasting comb color. Now, notice what I'm doing here, guys. I'm taking this section. This is my guide right here. This little piece of hair. And when I'm combing this section, I'm combing from the right into the middle, from the left into the middle. This is a really large section. I would say it's about inch and a half wide. The thing is, is if I comb everything to this side, then I'm getting a lot of extra push in the hair going this direction, which is fine if that's what you want. But I really want this hair to live straight down within its section because when you work within disconnections, when you work with a section that has corners like this one does, then I'm, it's going to, the hair is going to fall within that section within its natural fall. So within its natural fall, I don't want to have any push to the right or the left for this particular choice. Now, if that's what you want, you can, but I just want it to fall straight down. So notice that when I'm combing, I'm combing from the right and the left, bringing that section in, right into the middle of that section. Okay, I'm going to turn her back slightly so I can show you this next step. All right, guys, remember, I'll repeat this step. So if you don't see it well the first time, I will show it from a different angle again. Let's check here we go. So this cut doesn't take very long. It's really more combing than anything. And when I would work with students, you would think, oh my gosh, let's start with this type of cut. It's so cool. Well. I would say if you don't have good confidence with your combing, don't start with this cut, guys. As you can tell, it's all about control because if the hair is bunching in here, then it's not going to fall properly for you. So I'm pretty happy with the way this is combing out. Let's pick up that last little section. Now here's the key. I'm going to place my palm to the head. So my palm is facing the head form. Making sure I have my little guideline. And then way down here is my length. And I'm simply going to keep holding my guide and I'm going to twist and flip that around. Now, my shortest piece is up here and this is all in my length. So if you have someone who has really long hair, they want a lot of movement, approaching this with a little bit of disconnection in this sort of vertical sectioning Man, oh man, could we give them a lot of movement and still keep all of their length. So let's take a look at that one more time and then I'll let you see how it falls. And flip. My short guideline coming from up here. And bring that. now you could use your razor to do this if you wanted to. You could use different shears, but you can see where the swivel helps me with this. So when it falls, now I have that movement. And remember what I said earlier? This section doesn't tell this section what to do. This guy actually lives independently. So just to help with that, let's put a little clip and let's move on. Hey, Teresa. Yeah. Um, question from Katie Carey. She's wondering, do you recommend isolating sections more with a disconnected cut? Good, good question, Katie. So yeah, yes and no. <laughs> so if you're going to do this type of cut where the whole cut has a lot of disconnection happening, even though it looks blended when we're done, 
I like the pre-section, pre-coming out. That way you, you, know, you want to map out your plan. You want to know where you're going before it happens. Also, it looks really good. You look very organized. Your clients are going to appreciate the fact that they're like, wow, you, I mean, you're really doing something cool and special. Um, if I was working in a smaller area, like the mannequin that I showed earlier, I would definitely section that out first, again, to map out my plan. Then when we work in small areas, like I was, uh, even smaller areas, like I'm going to show you for, uh, here in just a little bit. Sorry about that, Katie. I'm a little tongue-tied too today, Andrew. But when we work in smaller areas, like I'm going to show you in a little bit, um, I don't always pre-map it out um, because it's just there'd be too many of them. And I'll show you what I mean when I get to that point, Katie. I hope that answers your question. Again, short point. Here's the length. Let's remove that hair. Now, don't get in a hurry, guys. I am talking that sheer down. This is a lot of hair. You don't have to take this larger sections. I just wanted to give you a point of contrast of something done with a lot large sections, and then I'll show you some the same cut done with smaller sections. So I'm talking that sheer down, talk, 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 moving just my thumb. The thumb controls the cutting blade. No dragging or slide cutting. But can you see? Now that creates that as it comes all the way down. Looking for my clip, there it is. And let's look at that one more time. And then I wanna show you how the two marry together. Now again, this cut, I will show this completed cut guys later. I'm gonna finish the other side for you. Just don't wanna take up our whole time doing this because I got so much more to show you. But let's look at it one more time. Just let's recap, combing the hair from the outside to the middle outside to the middle, bringing it straight out of the head, making sure that I pick up my guideline from the top of this pre-cut section up here, palm to the head, because you can't twist otherwise, the so palm has to face to the head form, combing all those tangles out, making the share, sure the hair is nice and smooth. There's my short piece, and now I'm going to flip and let's bring this one in really close because I want you guys to see this really well. There we go. Here's my short piece guideline. Here's my length. Hair's nice and damp. And again, moving just the thumb. Talking that hair, excuse me, talking the shear down the hair. All the way to the length. Now, if you wanted to get really, you know, really crazy with this, guys, go ahead and start doing some slide cutting or point cutting into here while you're within this section. You certainly could. Like, if I just wanted to freehand with my razor a little bit, I could come through and just kind of do a potato peel, if you will, and remove some addic additional weight and movement. Just, you know, this is meant to be creative and have fun with. How would you how would you approach cutting that section with the razor? Oh, good question. So let's go back and take a look at that. Okay, so let's just re-pick that section up. I'm going to move her back just slightly so I can get a better footing in here. So I think you guys probably remember this part, combing to the middle, finding my guide, piece of top, flip. Now, in this case, you have to kind of do this sort of movement to sculpt into it. You can let go of the section if you wanted to and just hold it here. So I've actually let go, and now I have a full-on twist. Now, when you do the twist, just keep in mind it's harder to see where your length is, but it does allow you to get that razor in there. But these are just creative choices. Uh, I just like to show options. You best will know what to do for your client when the time comes. In her case, I didn't pre-cut any of this length. Oh, she's got some long hair. <laughs> okay, let's take this out of the way so you guys can see. There we go. I didn't pre-cut any of this length, especially with this type of cut. I like to see this really broken up. And then as it dries, I would come in and decide, you know, what to do with this length. But let's take a look as this blends over. And again, please tune into my social media later because I'm going to show you the completed 
cut with her in style. All right, let's open that up a little bit. Okay, here we go, guys. So you can see, you can almost see the weight transfer in the hair. So this is the hair that came from the top. It comes through here and then it ends in a point right back here, just like the section did. Underneath it is all the movement and the layers. And I think it's a really fun way to approach disconnection as an entire haircut, opposed to just problem solving. And let me put her to the side. And let's bring back the one who's already completed. Now, I wonder if some of you can kind of spot the difference with her. There's a difference with the sectioning here. Notice on the last one where this, it came down to a point in this area. But this one is balanced all the way around. So why is that? So let's look at why that is, guys. So when you look, you can see on the board behind you guys, um, when we're working with this connection, I just showed you something in a triangular section. But this particular mannequin, the top is more square. So when she was sectioned out, this was a square section, which allows the weight transfer to be more balanced. And it doesn't move as much. In other words, when you work from square sections, let me get her balanced out for you. When you work with square sections, it causes it to stay within itself because there's corners. And it doesn't really want to move past the corners. If you want more movement, then I would do this more curved or in a round or circular type section. We're going to start looking at that more and more. But before we do, I promise that we'd raise her, her fringe a little bit. So let me show you. you hey, can Teresa. Also yeah. Quick question, too, on, on shag haircuts. Diane's asking, um, Diane's saying, I have fine hair clients interested in shaggier styles. How do you feel about working with shags on people with finer hair or lower density hair? Absolutely. Great question, Diane. So let me give you a little tip with that. This is a good little hot tip. So I'm one of those people. I love a shag hair, sort of haircut. I'm, I'm looking to getting mine done in that way at some point here in the future. I hope very soon. Uh, you know, it's always hard to be the client when you're standing behind the chair. Um, but what I would do to answer your question, Diane, is I would find that occipital bone area on your client. And from that point down, I would not cut into any of this hair. I still would, if you want to take this approach, still section out the top, determine your length, maybe use a little bit more square sort of section or rectangular section. That way you can build weight in the corners that way. If you do too narrow, it's going to be better for someone with a lot of hair or wider bone structure. But on the average person, I think the square or kind of round is great leave the hair out from the occipital bone down. Don't even go into the section because as you know, with people with finer or less density hair, it's probably not, you know, not as thick in this area. But then take everything else the same. Cut your top, do your vertical sections. This would now become your length. The hair right above your occipital bone would be your length because it would blend into here. So for that lower density person, they're still gonna get this look, but they won't be too shattered looking on the ends if that's a concern for them. Because this looks really cool too when you just do a really strong edge to it. Or if you can imagine even bringing this up shorter into a bob sort of length, this looks really awesome as well. I hope that answered your question, Diane. So as we go through here, guys, let's go back and look at Razory. Those are really good questions, Andrew. Thank you for sharing because you know, we all have different scenarios in the salon, right? And when we watch these things, I hope you're going, oh, that's like my client so-and-so. I hope you're inspired to go, this is what I'm going to do for her now or for him. So in this case, I love this heavy fringe, but, you know, it's a little hard to see through it. And we've seen lots of ways to kind of sweep and do the sweep sort of fringe that's really popular. But I wanted to show you guys that this particular client, she really likes that square sort of fringe there. She doesn't want to lose that. She just feels like it's a little too thick. So I'm going to go up underneath and I'm going to create a little bit of a broken up section for her. And I'm going to go section by section until I reach that desired amount of transparency that we're looking for. 
And again, this is just a rectangular section. Again, this is where I start planning. So earlier I answered the question about, do I always plan this out? Well, sometimes I pre-section, but in my mind, I already had this planned out. In my mind, I knew that I don't want this hair to start to push and do the sweep um, or the curtain. I want it to still be square, but I need it to look a little bit more airy or transparent. So to do that, I'm creating just this rectangular section that's about an inch deep back from the hairline and then subdividing that into smaller sections. And I'm going to raise it a little off the top, a little off the bottom. Now, some of this is like a little bit of discovery. I'm going to say, well, am I liking that? I am liking that. But this, I like to get a little, for my clients who like to have a little bit of extra texture, I'll go a little bit more aggressive. And here's some things to look for. When I look at this hair, do you see where that hair bends? I don't want to razor or texturize below that bend because I'm going to get little spikies or pokies. Now, if that's what the client wants, if they're that type of aggressive client, then fantastic. But do keep that in mind. This is a really resilient hairline. So I had to actually blow dry it down with this carbon fiber comb and get it to lay down a little bit for you guys. But I am going to stay past that band. Let's go back. There, now I'm liking that. So let's do a little bit more. Let's get this section out of our way. We'll do a couple more sections. Now, could we do this on anywhere on anywhere on the head form? Absolutely. Could we do this on a bob shape? Absolutely. Now, the key with this is I'm going to take within that little rectangle section that I'm working with, I'm just taking the smallest of veils, and I'm going to lay that right over the section that I just cut. Again, she doesn't want to, this particular scenario, we don't want to get rid of the square look. We just want it to be more broken up. Okay, weave, 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 and let's bend her down just a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Put my hand in there so you can see. Oops. Don't want to go shorter than that bend because that's where the bend is. I'm going to slide out past the bend, and I'm just going to take that piece off because I know we need to. I just took that right out of there. Now, if I wasn't sure, guys, I would have worked my way up to that. I wouldn't have just dove right in if I didn't know that's what we wanted to do. <clears throat> so those are two techniques, two ways of doing disconnection, looking at it in a square form or in a rectangular form, something with corners. Let's give her. Yeah, let's turn her around. There we go. And you can start to see how that breaks that up for her. Now she can see, <laughs> but she still has that long fringe that she wanted. Okay, let's move her over here, guys. And let's take down this one. Hey, Teresa, while you're doing that, a question about cutting on dry or wet hair, especially with that um, kind of shag sort of haircut, do you have yes. a preference? Great question. Uh, to cut wet or dry, that's always a great question. Um, I, to be honest with you, I do wet cutting and dry cutting. Obviously, the girl that we just saw, um, a lot of this happened on wet hair, just like the previous uh, mannequin that we showed. But I do feel like some details happen better on dry hair. Uh, and it's just knowing your tools. So if you're going to work with dry hair cutting, make sure your, your razor, in this case, has a nice, sharp, fresh blade. Uh, you don't want it to be dull. Otherwise, you get that pull sound or that rip sound to the hair. Uh, nobody likes that. Um, but just definitely, you know, have a fresh blade if you're going to do any sort of razor cutting. And then also with your shears, when you're working with your shears, um, just make sure when you're using your shears that they stay well oiled and you take care of them in the meantime. So depending on what I'm doing, 99% of the time, to answer your question, I'll cut on wet and on dry hair, but on both cuts, because I got to see how the person's going to live in it. All right, let's see. So this particular cut as well is going to be seen on a video that I'll release later in the next few days. Just wanted to show you how to go through, because one of the things with this connection is you can't just go in and just like start going crazy and start disconnecting. You have to construct your cut first. 
And there's nothing much more constructed than a bob, especially a bob that has balanced sides and back that's a little bit more of a square shape. Um, I know this is a cut that we practice and practice and practice and we really just strive to make as beautiful as we can because we're putting these straight lines on a rounded surface. So when you're looking at this particular cut, I wanted to actually make the video for you. So that'll be out later on the day. It's just, you know, so much time, Andrew. I wish we could, you know, had all day. <laughs> Me too. So let's take a look here. I wanted to show you in its pure form what an actual square section is. So you saw a square section in action or a rectangle section in action on our shag versions. But let's just take for demonstration only. Let's just take a moment. I apologize. Let me put that down. I want to go right into the crown area. Below the crown would be like the center back. Below the occipital bone, of course, would be the nape area. I'm going right into the crown and a little bit onto the top section. And the purpose of what I'm doing here for everyone is just so that you can see the sections that you choose will determine how the hair moves. So let me say that again. The sections that you choose will determine how the hair moves. So if I choose sections that are very square with corners, like you can see here, like here and here, let me move that out of the way, perfect then it's going to move within those corners. It's not going to want to move way over here. Even if I do over direction within this square or rectangle type section, it's still going to move within that section. So again, the sections that you choose will determine how the hair wants to move. So let me give you just a good example. So sometimes they're like, well, what if I added over direction to this? Well, let's take a look. And again, this is just a nice kind of rectangular to square section. And this is for demonstration, just so that you guys can see what I'm talking about with this connection. So I've, con I've constructed my cut. Now I'm going to bring this in quite short so that we can see for a demonstration how the section I chose will determine how the hair moves. So even when I move the hair around, it doesn't want to go past that little corner. Let's bring that up closer so you guys can see that. So here's my little corners. Even when I move this, it doesn't want to come live on the side. Now I did pull everything towards me to create some over direction. So I have push within the section, but notice when I get over here to this corner, it doesn't want to go forward. It wants to stay right where that section told it to stay. So let's take that section back up again. And for the purpose of demonstration, guys, I'm going to just pull this section straight up. That looks good. So imagine doing smaller sections throughout the head in a square or rectangular shape. If you're wanting something to stay stationary within that section, then you could create that. Which here is a great example again of that actually in play. Let's get this section out of the way. There we go. And that's exactly how this was done on her side. If I can get her straight, there we go. That's exactly how she was done on her side within the section. But visually, this is interesting as well. All right, let's put her back up here. All right, I hope that helps give you guys some ideas. Now, let me show you one other thing. And actually, you know, people ask me, Teresa, do you just cut a big section of hair like that sometimes? And I'm like, well, yeah, if it's relevant to the end look. But I got to say, if this connection is a newer technique to you or something that you're not as comfortable with, start in small sections. And here's what I mean. Have you ever cut someone's hair and you've went through and you've texturized, you've point cut, you've done all these amazing things? Well... We lost Teresa for a moment. <laughs> so I'm sure she'll jump back in. Probably when she moved her computer, it just uh, shut something down. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Again, we just lost Teresa just for a minute. I'm thinking that when she went to adjust her computer, it probably just um, unplugged something or something like that. So uh, stay tuned and we will get right back to the haircutting in just a moment. And we got her back. Yay! I don't know what happened, guys. I mean, you know, uh, we we uh, disconnected with this connection. Sorry, had to do it. <laughs> yeah, we said the design of disconnected Wi-Fi. That's so. right. Uh, that's not the memo I wanted to send, though. So let's go back to uh, <laughs> well, everyone is super super excited because you're back, and um, <laughs> we were hoping that you weren't just finishing that haircut without us. So. That's it, guys. That's all we do. That we're done. No, kidding. <laughs> not at all. So, you know, um, I love lemonade. And when you get lemons, just make some lemonade, guys. But I don't feel like this is even a lemon. Sometimes these things happen in the tech world or the Wi-Fi world. But we're back. So let's get back to where we were started. So we were talking about, you know, do, do I always take such a large section? That was really for demonstration's sake. And if you're uncomfortable with learning about this connection, well, let's just take it in smaller bits. Because I think we were talking about how we talk about, you know, we go in and we do point cutting to the hair. We make, we point cut internally. We come through and we weave and we cut the hair. Well, sometimes you get results that you like and sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? You know, has that ever happened to any of you? I'm sure it has. I know it certainly happened to me. Here's what made the difference for me is when I would go through and I would just randomly pick up hair and then cut it, I never considered where the hair was coming from. Again, remember what I said earlier, the section you choose determines how the hair is going to move. So if I don't even know what section I just chose, how do I know how the hair is going to move? So that was a big aha or wow moment for me in my career when I started doing this sort of work. So I tidied up my, my uh, texturizing as well. So this is just, 
Let's see if we can see it here. She likes this uh, tripod. I apologize, guys. All right, there we go. So if I come through and I take a square section here or rectangular section, and then I'm just using my shear and I'm just gently, looks like I'm almost backcombing the hair. I'll leave that little section there. Let's take another section again, just straight across. Gently closing my shear. Now I'm not closing my shear all the way because that cut all the hair off. I'm just gently moving it all the way through that section. Let's do it one more time. This is a great technique. So now I know where the hair is going to fall. I know the hair is going to fall here and I know it's going to fall within where it lives because I chose the section at the bone structure at the scalp that tells it to do so. Let that fall. Let's take a look. And I wish you could feel this hair because even with that, this hair feels even softer. This is a great technique for people with that coarser hair thicker hair who wear these sort of cuts, but now the hair wants to stay to the side. Like it stays where I'm telling it to go rather than falling right back in sort of the face. And it doesn't add unwanted layers because a lot of times people want these one length looks, but they don't want to keep them because they're, uh, you know, they're a little heavy. They're not, it just falls in their face or it doesn't have movement. But now you see this section has movement. Whereas this side who I haven't done anything at all to it, just stays right where it is. So there's zero disconnection done here of any kind, no texturizing, nothing. And this has some through the front. And if you look at it from the profile, you can see how this hair wants to stay back now. But notice I only did the hair that lived up in this area because I'm not trying to make this move anymore. Just wanted that to stay off the face. So I hope that helps give you an idea of where square rectangular sections can help you and how it makes a difference, how it lives on the, the head form. And remember, if it has any sort of corner to it, it's probably going to live within that section. But let's take a look at another one. We'll just put her down. We got some curly hair to show as well, guys. Let's check our time. We're doing great. So let's take a look at round, because I haven't showed you. We've talked about squares and rectangles and so on, but we haven't talked about really what does a round or a circular section look like. So let's take a look at that right quick. Now I bet you can already spot the disconnection on this fringe is coming from oops, a triangular section. There's the point to the end. But let's say we just wanted to kind of break this up a little bit. Now she hasn't been texturized or anything yet. Her cut is on going to be on my uh, social media as well. So pretty much everything we're looking at today, you can see the cut in its entirety on Instagram later today and throughout the week. So I want to go up to the top section. And I just want to demo to you if I took a little bit of a rounder section. Now, normally I wouldn't take such a big circle but I would definitely want to take the corners off. And I find that it's really easy to make our straight lines first. So make your straight line sections first. Let me go through that way and then here. And then just take the corner off. So if I pick this hair up and I come through and I cut And again, this is for demonstration. I just want you to see how a circular section will move. That's better. I think we can see that better. There we go. Cut, and then when it falls, now it wants to move. Notice when I do this, if, if I push it to the front, it wants to stay to the front. If I push it to the back, it wants to stay to the back. If this client wants to be able to move their head and have maximum movement, that's going to happen. So let's think about that in a smaller section. So again, going back to texturizing the hair with this connection, because that's what texturizing is, right? It's you're disconnecting smaller sections away from the body of the hair. So if I'm just picking up randomly, I don't know what's gonna happen. But what if I go through 
And I picked up a little circle on purpose. There we go. And perhaps with this one, I decide I want to twist cut it a little bit just to do something different. And then I'm going to come through with my razor and just take that away. Now I've added movement to the top that will swing in either direction. So again, the section you choose at the scalp or at the bone structure will determine how that hair wants to move. That should be on a t-shirt. <laughs> so let's take a look at that one more time. I'm going to just take my scissor, let me get the comb out of the way, excuse me, take my comb, and I'm just going to draw a little circle. Okay. And then let's bring this back up. I'm going to bring this closer so you guys can see. I don't want to go anywhere near the computer, no more Wi-Fi disconnections. So we're going to leave it right there. I'm going to bring it in. Now, all the other rules apply to, we haven't talked about this. So right now, everything, the elevation has been straight up. But if I'm elevating down here, if I'm below that hair is 90, if I'm below the 90 for that hair, then I'm going to be building weight. So that rule doesn't change, even with texturizing and disconnection. If I'm above the hair is 90, then I'm going to go into layering, which is more a removal of weight. So what we haven't looked at is what if we stay below? So let me step up here. So I'm going to say below that hair is 90. Again, circular section. I'm going to come through here and let's point cut a little bit of that out. So what's going to happen to that section now? Can you see the movement that she's getting? Andrew, I hope that's helping them see some really amazing ways to use disconnection. So just to clarify too, you were in those circles that you were taking were pretty much just to demonstrate what how the hair will fall within a circular yeah. section, not necessarily a texturizing technique that you recommend to take circles on the top of the head. Or... Yeah, the, the, and today's really all about that, right? Um, before we look at triangles, let's take a look at this. You know, we're really we're really focusing Andrew and and everybody on what if I take a circular section? What is that going to create with this connection? It's going to create movement. What if I take a section at the scalp or at the, at the bone structure that's more square, it has corners? Well, I'm gonna have my least amount of movement, but that may be what I need, especially in a fringe area. And then triangles we're about to look at with some curly hair. Triangle sections don't have to be on curly hair, but I just thought it'd be fun to show it that way. Um, when you look at these guys, this is, can happen anywhere on the head form, anywhere you can do this. We could go on for a week about all the different ways. This is just a teaser. This is just getting us introduced into the, the science or the design of disconnection. Now in the future, I hope to be doing some more classes for you guys. I'll continue to put it on my Facebook as well, and, excuse me, on my Instagram as well, about other things you can do with disconnection. But right now, let's take a look at this beautiful curly hair. This haircut as well, again, with this connection, you know, we have to construct before we can deconstruct. Um, it, in theory, it's great if we can just go in there and start cutting hair, but you gotta have a plan. And that plan is determined by the bone structure. And then we choose to elevate based upon our technique of a line, something very heavy, graduation, a buildup of weight, or if we're gonna do some sort of layers to create our final look. So in her case, I'm actually going to use my fingers to kind of section this because I don't want to get my comb cut, my comb stuck within that curly hair. So I'm just going to use my hands to do that section. And I'll show you what I've sectioned out. Now, this time I'm working with a triangular section. This is how I would put this in this particular cut. What I want to create is airiness with the front and some softness for her without looking like we've cut all of this hair off. This hair, even though curly, was cut with tension. Sometimes I will cut curly hair with tension. It depends on what I want to create as an end result. In her case, I wanted a lot of lift and explosion of width to the hair. So by cutting with, with tension, it allowed that hair to really bounce back. But she has a pretty uniform curl. 
when cutting the curly hair, which is a whole nother class, but I will say this one thing is, you know, look at the curl pattern, read the curl pattern. Um, tension may not be your best friend. Sometimes you have to do a little bit more freestyling. But since this curl was pretty balanced, I went in with intention to cut it. All right, so let's take a look. Let's get this down. You see where I did this little triangular section here? So there are corners to a triangle. So this is going to live within this section, but it won't be as heavy looking or as solid looking as a square section. And the more narrow I make the triangle, the more narrow I make these points, the slimmer it's going to look. So you can see this is pretty askewed in there. Let's see, get it really close. Pretty narrow looking. And because it's fun, let's go in and let's really cut this. Now I don't want to comb this out because it's curls, but I'm going to leave it longer to the front, but I'm going to go shorter to the back. And I'm just going to point cut that in. I want to make sure you guys can see that. I think we can see best from this angle. So again, longer to the front, getting shorter towards the back of the triangle. Let those little curls fall. Do you see how what I did is I took the thickness or the volume out from here, but it's very narrow so it doesn't sit like a block inside the hair but it still comes out across her forehead, which means when I take this down, and this is something I would actually do on this cut if this, and actually I have a client that I do this with because she likes to have hair that comes forward, but we can't go in and point cut those curls because they would just be destroyed. Um, not hair this curly anyway. Let me move her around. And there we have it, guys. So a section where it's more triangular and you don't even see it. Right now, this type of sectioning is just serving a function for us. All right. Andrew, how are we doing with this connection, the design of this connection? Any questions before we wrap up today? Well, I can tell you I've learned a lot about disconnection and detachment or however you want to reference it. So <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And I love how you um, shared the different types of sections and how placing those different kinds of sections um, places weight in different ways and creates movement. Because I think that's the big question a lot of times, even just a, you know, everyone kind of got super into the undercut, right? Yeah. And so everyone just kind of took a halo section here, yeah. cut this short and then let the top fall over. Then we started to get creative when we started to make star patterns. Then we started to make triangle patterns. <laughs> and this really clarified why you would choose, okay, do I choose a circular detachment disconnection? Exactly. Do I choose a more square pattern? Do I choose a more triangular pattern? Yeah, and, and my advice to everybody is, is just to hitchhike onto what you just said there, because it really made me think about it, is a lot of times we would create this undercut because that was the thing to do, right? And I'm, I love the undercuts, don't, don't get me wrong. But what if this was too thick, you know, this is a little bit too much volume here. Couldn't I just come through the middle remove some weight in this area mm -hmm. using one of the three things we've talked about today. So now this would lay a lot sleeker and closer to the head without looking like we've layered everything. For sure. Yeah. So yeah. that's my, that's my challenge to everyone is, you know, don't go out and just try to take all of this and just put it all into one haircut on your next client right. <laughs> is, um, this is really going to push your brain. I know when, when I first learned about this, I was like, oh, I got it. I can do this. And I would go out and I'd be like, oh, I don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, it. That's not what I thought that was going to do. So what I learned was, um, you know, get your mannequins out. Get curly hair mannequins out. If you don't have a curly hair mannequin, perm a mannequin and make her have curly hair. Learn about what it's going to do. Um, just pick random spots on the bone structure. You know, I recommend you work within the top, the sides, the mastoid process or in the back um, and try each of those sectioning patterns, big ones, little ones, just observe what the hair does. So that's my challenge for you guys. That's what I hope you guys do because I know that was the best thing I could have done. Now I can put it together like a bunch of Legos or puzzle pieces and I know exactly where it's gonna go because I can see it in my brain before I even do this. 
I'm mm -hmm. like, she needs more triangles. So as you can see from here, I would I would go through and put another one here. I put some in the back as well, just so I could get that natural disbursement of curls and not look so solid. But practice, guys. That's the biggest thing is you just got to get out and practice. And if you do have that wonderful client or friend or coworker or child or spouse or <laughs> mate in your life, that will allow you to do what a real person can do because each person's bone structure is different. Um, and just, you know, try it in little increments and get going. This will change how you cut hair, no matter how you cut hair or what you've learned or what system you've learned. We all do one length hair. We all cut within natural fall. We all graduate and we all do layers, regardless of what names you call that. Those rules don't change. All I did was took sections. Let's move her over. I put, I just took sections and applied those rules into small areas. So yes. have fun, be creative. Teresa, I'm gonna bring you up on full screen one more time because yeah. we had a request to get a, a screenshot of your um, of your poster. So if you could move the mannequin oh, yeah. and just step a, off screen just a little bit. Absolutely. Guys, if you wanna take a quick screenshot here. And of course, as always, you can always come back later to revisit the content because this will stay live on the Facebook and YouTube channel. That's great. Thank you, Teresa. And uh, Andrew, I'll have this up later too. And for those of us who like to see the head maps and how it's drawn out, uh, I did videos and head maps of these wow. cuts. So, um, because we all learn different ways, right, Andrew? So I, I'm, I want to make sure we hit all the different ways that we learn and one or one or more will resonate with people. So I can't wait to share them. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks. That was very generous of you to create so much content. So everyone, go follow Teresa and <laughs> make sure you check out the continuation of the content that she's just kind of given us the little dabble in to start yes. us into our adventure of disconnection. Um, thank you so much, Teresa. Hang out backstage just for a few yeah. minutes. I'll say goodbye before we close out. Thank you, everybody.